Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this episode of Life Without Baggage. I'm going to be talking again today about imagery, imagery to assist us in our personal growth, but I'm going to focus on some spiritual imagery today to help you in a variety of ways with forgiveness, with emotional pain, with shame and guilt. This is more of a teaching, and I hope that you'll find it useful. These are some principles I have been using with clients for decades. And I find that this can be really a game changer for people that are not accustomed to thinking or praying this way. I really enjoy providing this information and these podcasts for people, but I would request that you consider checking out my books on Amazon. I have two devotional books. I have a Bible study. I have a workbook called Life Without Baggage. And you're probably familiar with the book I've been talking about for the last few months, Anxiety, Depression, and Helplessness, Keys to Break Free. So I would really request that you consider picking up a copy if you've been enjoying these podcasts. So let's get into today's episode. At the end of the last podcast where I was talking about imagery, practical imagery, peaceful imagery, and then I started talking about spiritual imagery. So I'm going to really do a deep dive on a couple of passages that can assist you in knowing what to do with difficult emotion that you're trying to process or that you've carried for years and you don't know what to do with it. So so I'm going to read this time from the Passion Translation the verse that I ended with last time. And that is from Colossians chapter two. This is verse 14. He canceled out, that's Jesus, every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. So all of the accusations, all of the list of sin we've committed. He canceled out all of them. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. So this verse talks about the reality that once we have committed sin, there has to be payment. And so if you're not familiar with my other teachings on forgiveness, to understand that this is why Jesus died on the cross. If he came to earth to be a good teacher, he didn't have to die on the cross. That would have been wasted. It was necessary for someone without sin to die on behalf of each of us who has sin. And because he is the perfect sacrifice, fully God, who took on a human body, he was qualified to pay for our sin. And and that's why it's nailed to the cross. Every indictment is nailed to the cross and canceled because that's where Jesus paid for it. So if you struggle with guilt or shame, you need to know this is paid for. Jesus paid for it. So if you keep revisiting it, 
it's not necessary. If there's something from your past where you were blamed over and over for things that you did or maybe that you didn't do, and you have that propensity to stay in a place of guilt or shame, know that that isn't coming from God. That if you have asked Jesus to be your savior, if you have been invited him to be the Lord of your life, then he has canceled that debt. He accepted your debt and he's canceled it. This says it's public, that it's paid for. So no one can hold it against you. So don't hold it against yourself. Allow him to transform you. I remember the first time I heard somebody explain this. It it dramatically affected me and my understanding that this is real. It's not just a nice teaching. This is real, and I can count on it. Now, the other aspect of imagery that is important from a spiritual standpoint, but also from an emotional standpoint, is that I've explained, and maybe you already know, the principle that sin has to be paid for, and Jesus paid for it on the cross. But not everybody understands that Jesus also died for the sin committed against us. I think I learned that principle reading the the work of David Siemens. He wrote uh, a lot of books on emotional healing. I think back in the 70s, his books were written. So this is important because if you are carrying hurt or rejection or resentment, or emotional pain, wounding of any kind. You didn't sin. You were sinned against. But you can follow the same process. So think about if there's some kind of emotional pain, grief, anger, resentment, bitterness, sorrow. Think about if there's any of those things that you still carry with you. You don't want to, but you do because of something that has hurt you that you just don't know what to do with it. We can choose to forgive the person who caused us pain. It doesn't mean it's okay. The Lord still knows what happened, and he, but we're allowing him to decide what to do about it. And maybe we'll need to do something to protect ourselves, to avoid trusting that person again, maybe to even avoid allowing them any opportunities to hurt us. But that's boundaries, and we're not talking about boundaries today. This is about having a place to take the pain that you're carrying, the resentment that you're carrying. It can help to have a place to take it. So we take it to the cross. But more than that, we allow Jesus to take it into his body. His body is where sin was paid for. It's not just the cross. It's his body accepted all of the pain, all of the torment, all of the things that sin does to us does to other people. He took it on. That's what that means. Let me read to you from Isaiah 53. I'm going to start in verse four, and this time I'm reading from the Amplified. Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pain. Yet we considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God. In other words, when he was crucified, people thought, well, he must have done something bad. He must have, he must have deserved it. But bad things can happen without us deserving it, huh? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needed to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, We are healed and made whole. 
So we can pray and we can say, Lord, I choose to forgive and then name the person. And I release to you the pain, the resentment, the anger. I ask you to take it into your body on the cross where you paid for my sin and the sin committed against me. I ask you to take it from my heart, from my mind, even if there are ways I'm carrying it in my body. I ask you, Lord, to release your peace, your wholeness into me. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your, your peace. Help me to abide in your presence and to feed on your word so I know truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's a way to use the imagery of the cross, of the payment for sin, to help you release things that you don't want to carry and help you receive the forgiveness that you need. I have one more bit of imagery that I want to share with you today. I posted it recently on my social media, but this is a good place to share it again if you didn't see it and also to receive this blessing, even if it's not new to you. To keep a computer running smoothly, one of the things that needs to be done is called defragmentation, where all the scattered pieces need to be pulled together and then it can work more smoothly. And in many ways, the human heart is like that. It becomes fragmented through stress, through rejection, through things that break us and wear us out. So I want to pray a blessing for you. Ephesians 3.16 says he strengthens us at the core of our being. So I pray a blessing for you right now that the Lord would strengthen you at the core of your being to pull the pieces together of anything in life that has broken you so that you can walk with him and you can experience his joy. In Jesus' name, amen. You need. So I hope that these examples will be helpful to you. I would love to hear your comments if you found something really useful or if you felt some kind of relief or freedom that was new for you as a result of this prayer. So this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend.